Contrary to popular belief, archaeologists don't do all of their work with shovels, trowels, or diggers. They don't even do all of their work in fields. Here in the 2020s, you'll find them teaming up with their paleontologist peers and using the very latest sonar equipment to make their discoveries. And those discoveries are just as likely to happen at sea as they are on land. We've seen some amazing discoveries made in the recent past, and we've put some of our favorites together for you in this video. Let's start with a recent project at an ancient Aboriginal site of Moisil in Victoria, Australia. If the experts are right about what they believe they've found here, it could change the whole story of global human migrations as we understand it. Archaeologists and scientists working at the location believe that they've identified deliberately charred rocks and weather-worn shells there, and they're claiming them as evidence of human activity. That would mean that there were indigenous people living in this part of Australia 120,000 years ago twice as long as is currently believed. That's so far back in history that it's at odds with the current prevalent theories about when human beings left Africa and which direction they headed in when they left. More work will have to be done at this site to persuade scientists to accept the findings of the team there at the moment, but the evidence looks strong. There aren't many natural forces that could have blackened these rocks in this precise formation. And it does look a lot like an ancient human hearth. Add the presence of the shells to that, and you have the telltale signs of people cooking and eating here during prehistoric times. Greece was one of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, and relics of ancient Greek history can be found all over modern Greece, including deep below its streets. Archaeologists uncovered the tomb of a Greek Bronze Age warrior close to the ancient city of Pylos in 2015 and started an excavation project that has so far lasted for five years. During that time, the husband and wife team of Jack Davis and Sharon Stocker have brought more than 3,500 objects from the grave to the surface, many of which are made from gold, silver, and bronze. The warrior was buried in full body armor, which has also been recovered, and was sent to his final resting place with some elaborate grave goods, including the Pylos combat agate, four solid gold rings, and various weapons. They believe that the warrior might have perished during the Mycenaean invasion of Crete somewhere around the year 1450 BCE. That's a controversial suggestion that as there are still a few historians who don't believe that the Mycenaeans ever invaded at all, and that the eventual establishment of Mycenaean culture on the mainland was arrived at through assimilation rather than conquest. There's a strong argument in favor of saying that Englishman William Shakespeare was the greatest writer who ever lived. He's certainly the most influential. His plays and writings have been translated into every major language and exported to almost every nation in the world. What we're looking at right now is believed to be the first ever Shakespeare play to reach Spain. It's an edition of the play The Two Noble Kinsmen, thought to be Shakespeare's final work, and this edition of it was published in 1634. That's a long time ago, but still posthumous from Shakespeare's point of view. The manuscript appears to have been held at the Royal Scots College of Salamanca for centuries, and it doesn't appear to have been known about even by the college's owners until it was identified by researcher John Stone among their archives in September 2020. The Spanish Union catalog of pre-1900 imprints suggests that there aren't any English plays published prior to 1720 in Spain, so this artifact was either smuggled into the country or carried in someone's private collection without anybody knowing about it. The college is now taking much better care of it than it has done for the past few hundred years. Almost all of us have heard a version of the Nazi gold train legend. The story that says somewhere underground in Europe, there's a train laden heavy with all of the gold, artwork, and precious jewels that Hitler's Nazis stole as they stormed through Europe. It's generally thought to be a myth, but in 2015, 
a report came from Poland saying that a team of experts had finally located the long-lost train. The most commonly told version of the story is that the train went into a tunnel close to the border between Poland and Germany in 1945 and was never seen again. Now the location of the train is being given as Ruklaw, Poland. Scans taken by ground-penetrating radar appear to show a 300-foot-long train deep below the surface. Based on the scans, the train appears to be armored. That would certainly suggest that the cargo aboard it is valuable. The next step is to dig down and access the train, a process that has moved frustratingly slowly so far. Has the lost gold of the Third Reich finally been found again? Experts still need to do a lot of work to prove it, but the suggestion has got the public excited. Here's a question you've probably never asked yourself. Where are the world's oldest known sperm cells? And how old are they? The answer to that improbable question is they were discovered inside the body of a tiny crustacean in September 2020. And they're approximately 100 million years old. The crustacean is trapped inside a piece of amber that turned solid black when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. It's from a species of ostracod not entirely dissimilar to those that still inhabit the planet today, and it predates any previously discovered example of animal sperm by a full 50 million years. The find was made deep inside a mine in Myanmar, trapped inside a blob of tree resin that's no larger than a postage stamp. Fewer than 20 examples of ancient ostracod soft tissue have ever been found, so this latest discovery is truly remarkable. Scientists have been so encouraged by the find that they're now going to focus their activity on trying to locate other tiny fragments of amber inside the mine in the hope that there might be more they can learn from it. While we're waiting on confirmation that the Nazi gold train in Poland is a genuine discovery, there's no doubt at all about the fine collection of ancient goods recovered from a graveyard there in August 2020. A team from the Institute of Archaeology at the University of Krakow has found a collection of iron needles, spearheads, clothes fastening clasps, an ornamental spindle, and a fine example of a single-edged sword at a site in Bezke. They believe that the gravesite might have been used by the Bzewersk culture, who established themselves in the south of the country between the 3rd and 5th centuries BCE. They lasted until the 5th century, when it's thought that they were conquered by the invading Huns. Most of the grave goods were damaged by agricultural activity that's been carried out on the land over the centuries since the burials. But the sword was miraculously found in a near-perfect state. A single-edged sword is obviously less useful in a battle than a double-edged one, and it might be the case that its use was ceremonial. It's thought that the Zirorsk people preferred to use spears in battle, which would explain the finding of multiple spearheads as opposed to just one sword. Is there such a thing as the perfect beer? We're not sure of the answer to that question, but the ancient Chinese were trying very hard to create one 6,000 years ago. In January 2020, a team of researchers studying Chinese amphorae fragments from the Neolithic era made a discovery that surprised them. The amphorae had been used in the beer-making process, and two different methods had been employed. The amphorae were made by the Yangshao culture, who once owned almost all the land in the Yellow River Valley. By placing the shards into an ultrasonic bath and then processing the liquid residue obtained from them, the team identified traces of fungi, proving that the containers were used to brew beer in two ways. The first involved using malts made from rice and seeds, resulting in a low alcohol beer. The second used grains, moldy grass, and a dried fermentation starter known as ku, which would have resulted in a much stronger beverage. Altogether, the findings suggest that in the ancient world, a Yangshao party was a very good party indeed. You might even consider them the originators of the real ale craze that's taking over the Western world at the moment. It's a tradition for an artist to sign a painting in the bottom corner, but something more personal was discovered 
on one of Leonardo da Vinci's pictures in January 2019. It's his thumbprint. It's doubtful that the Renaissance master left his thumbprint in the sketch deliberately. It's a drawing called The Cardiovascular System and Principal Organs of a Woman, and was created as an anatomical study, rather than a work of art. It's also highly unlikely you'll ever have seen the drawing. It's in the British Royal Collection, and is considered to be the private property of Queen Elizabeth II. Da Vinci is thought to have made the sketch in 1509, and probably never imagined that it would end up in a royal collection one day. The thumbprint doesn't tell us anything new about the life of the great polymath, but reminds us that he was just as human as the rest of us. A thumbprint feels somehow more intimate than a signature, and as a result, it allows us to feel a little closer to the artist himself. We're heading back to Poland again because it's been a global hotspot for great archaeological discoveries recently. Next up is a 700-year-old shipwreck that's been identified in the country's Vistula River, just north of the Polish capital city of Warsaw. The enormous shipwreck was located in January 2020. It's an incredible 120 feet long and 20 feet wide. An estimate drawn up by Science in Poland magazine says that it would have been capable of carrying up to 100 tons of goods up and down the river, which would have made it an enormously valuable trading ship for its era. Dr. Artur Brzorska, who works for the University of Warsaw and is an underwater archaeology specialist, believes that the vessel's primary function was probably to ship grain to Gdansk. Only three wrecks have ever been found in this stretch of the river, but that's mostly down to the poor conditions that researchers are faced with there. The water currents are strong, and visibility is abysmal. It took high-tech sonar equipment mounted on a motorboat to locate the wreck, and it might take something even more advanced than that to reach the wreck and find out if there's still anything valuable aboard. Among the many items of clothing you might consider buying for a newborn baby is a pair of soft boots. Apparently, this isn't a new idea. In April 2019, archaeologists found a fragment of an elaborately decorated and very small shoe in Switzerland, and they've concluded that it's part of a 14th century baby boot. The leather ankle boots appear to have been covered in a floral pattern and came with a number of decorative buttons and clasps. The find was made during the excavation of a medieval town in the Swiss canton of Jura. Only five boots that bear even a passing resemblance to this discovery have ever been found in Europe. By measuring the fragment and extrapolating an idea of its full size from there, the experts believe that it was probably worn by a one-year-old child. The top of the boot is made from goat leather, while the sole is made from cow leather. It wouldn't have been easy to make, and it was probably expensive to own, suggesting that while people still might have bought boots for babies 700 years ago, they probably only did it for the babies of the wealthy. In February 2020, 55-year-old Israeli veterinarian Rafi Bahalul went for his morning swim in the sea close to the coast of Atlit when he spotted what he thought were hieroglyphs in the seabed. He couldn't get near enough to take a better look, but after he got home and dried off, he phoned the Israel Antiquities Authority who sent Jacob Shavrit to the site to investigate further. And that's how Rafi became responsible for the discovery of a 3,400-year-old stone artifact from ancient Egypt. It might look like a decorative tablet of the kind you might find on an Egyptian temple wall, but it's actually an Egyptian stone anchor. The drilled hole at the top of the slab is there to secure a rope to it, and this particular style of carved stone anchor was popular with the Egyptian sailors of the Bronze Age it might be the case that the stone was taken from a temple or shrine and then repurposed as an anchor, which would explain why the hieroglyphs on it appear to be cut off on one side. Is this site in the Catalonia region of Spain the world's oldest art gallery? Maybe so. There are so many engravings, carvings, and other drawings on the walls of this cave that it must have been a sacred shrine at the very least, and it's a very ancient one. Archaeologists believe the inscriptions here were made 15,000 years ago. Somehow, the caves and their contents had gone completely unnoticed by the world until October 2019, when a team from Rovira 
E. Virgili University decided to check on the welfare of a group of caves close to Le Espluga de Francoli after heavy flooding in the area. They found that the caves were unharmed, and that one of them, the cave known as Font Major, contained more than 100 instances of rock art, including paintings of horses, deer, oxen, and human beings. Around 60 of the drawings are either abstract or haven't been correctly interpreted yet. The area of the cave containing the artwork is difficult to reach on foot, which might partially explain how it's gone undiscovered until now. Such is the delicate nature of the sandy silt that the images are etched into that it's unlikely the site will ever be open to the public. But three-dimensional images of the drawings have been processed and are now available online. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.